uh, today we're going to be doing our workshop. Um, so today we're going to be starting with this. You should have this in your art kit. Um, these are stencils. So I'm going to talk as we cut it out. So we're going to be cutting out fear today. Um, what I found is easier uh, is if you cut out each letter and you should have scissors. Veronica, thank you so much for putting these kits together. I know how much work it was to pick up everything and um, hopefully it gave you some time to spend outside. <laughs> And to move the paper, this is, uh, it might be easier. So what I do is I continue my cut and I just kind of move, Ooh, okay. And I just kind of move the paper. Sometimes it makes it easier. Uh, you know, like if you follow the curve and you just kind of move the paper around. And I'm just going to talk while we do this because I know we have um, only 50, 50 minutes and it goes by really quickly. So um, I just want to talk about why we're cutting these out and then let me know if everyone's, once y'all are done so we could do this together. Um, I have been, so I just recently begun sharing this so thank you all for making me feel like I can um, trust all of you. Uh, my family has been uh, directly affected by this immigration crisis um, and in May, uh, well starting in uh, 2016, uh, there we were um, having to deal with things a lot more. I mean, we've been dealing with this for the past like 20 years, uh, but since 2016, things have gotten progressively worse. And so my husband and I have been working with um, Vietnamese and Cambodian community members who have, have and had been ordered for deportation. And as we were um, sitting across from these family members and listening to their stories, uh, I, just was overwhelmed with the fear that I felt for them and through them. And seeing these families, um, some with children, some without, but just like the fear of the unknown, of losing home. And these are um, Vietnamese people who had fled Vietnam in 1975 from um, the communist regime. Um, and so now they were there they are uh being threatened um and they should they be deported back to vietnam um they will be falling into the same hands that persecuted them in the first place so i my question was how do i help alleviate this fear because we can um and i guess that's one of the questions that I'd, I'd love for us all to think about as we're working on this project is how do we confront these fears? How do we address them? And, you know, conference is interesting because the word confrontation is usually, when we hear that word, most of the time, for me at least, um, I kind of connect it to something negative, right? Like an argument or a fight or a, uh, like something like a volatile situation. But confrontation is actually just like addressing the issue, right? So it's not always um, a negative thing. And so I was just thinking, how do we confront these fears? Because there are fears that can like spring us into action, right? Um, so for example, you're late, you're, you know, uh, you've, you've procrastinated, or I should say we, because <laughs> I, I procrastinate like all the time. Um, you know, we're, we procrastinate uh, on a project and then we're, you know, and then that fear starts kicking in like, oh my goodness, I need to get started. I need to get started. I want to do well this semester, this quarter, and then it springs us into action. So there's that kind of fear. And then there's a fear that hinders us. So those lies that come to us and claim that we're not good enough, uh, we 
um, don't have enough resources. They, we are in it alone. And so those are the fears that I really wanted to address. And, um, and uh, encourage us to address together. So when I was <laughs> asking myself this, like, how do I, how do I help these refugees? Uh, how do I alleviate the fear? And then I thought, how cool would it be if we could just erase the fear? Just like, what would that be like? And I thought, wow, what if we could physically erase fear? So that this is where, um, that's where this project came into place. That's where the, the concept came from. And um, it's been so rewarding because the interactive work moves the art from being my work to our work. And so I love working with our students. Um, I love working with the community. Um, and it's just so important in times like this, because for some reason, at least in my experience, the negative emotions, uh, they just lie. <laughs> like, you're in this alone. You know, you're, you don't have the strength to make it through. And that's another thing is there's a lot of discussion on inherited trauma, which is very real, right? We live that as human beings, all of us live that every day, uh, whether or not we recognize it. But I, I feel like there's a lot less talk um, about inherited strength. And because I do so much work about my family history, um, I, uh, I really want to harness that and remember that, right? Because this inherited strength is the thing that is one of the things that helps us through the inherited trauma. So, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, so, so for these little, uh, we're using these as stencils on our Bristol board. So for these little, uh, I don't even know what you call them. I know there's a word for it in typography, typography, but I just kind of cut through them because it doesn't really matter. We're going to be tracing around them anyway, and it's a lot easier if you just kind of cut through the letters like that. So, um, yeah, I got, how is everybody doing? <laughs> Good. So for, um, yeah, for those of you who are done, uh, we're going to be doing a second project where we're going to be writing to fear itself. Um, and yeah, I just want to really think about those internal and external fears, right? So the internal fears, um, what are those versus external fears? Uh, which ones are more difficult to deal with or are they equally as difficult, right? Uh, it all is kind of <laughs> hard for me to deal with. I mean, we. I would love to say that I am not affected by outside factors, but that, um, yeah, I feel like there's so much in the world that, that tries to incite fear, right? Like, uh, how we should look. And if we don't look a certain way, then, uh, we're not doing life right or something or how we should be, how we should act, how we should think. Um, and those really play a part. Uh, in our well-being or, um, you know, hardship or, you know, depression. Uh, so uh, there's the external fears and this, there's the internal fears, like that constant battle that we have with ourselves, which is like part of being human, right? So, um, yeah. So... This project that we're doing today is uh, um, we are going to be filling in. Let me know when you're um, when you're done cutting the stencils out. Uh, for those of you who have, we're going to be tracing them onto your Bristol board, and you can place it anywhere you want. Like it doesn't have to be centered. Um, although we are the second part of this class of the last 30 minutes, we're going to be drawing birds. Um, I, I've done a, um, a pre, I pre-recorded that drawing tutorial that I'll play on YouTube 
Um, and I could share that screen too. But so this is what I did. This is just kind of like a photocopy. Um, so we're gonna be filling in the fear together and we'll do that all together. And then we're gonna be erasing it. And then um, we're gonna be drawing these birds. So this is where I have like the bird oriented, like perched. Um, I incorporate a lot of birds in my work to represent liberation and freedom. So this is about uh, freedom from fear. Um, the ones that hinder us. So, uh, so think about that and where you're, you might want your bird as you set your, um, your text. So um, we're going to be tracing these uh, wherever you would like. I think I'll maybe move it to the bottom. Yeah. So this is like a mini version of what's going to be um, happening at Gallery 51 um, for our Hostile Terrain exhibit. Really excited about that. Um, yeah, there is a lot of fear that kind of went into, I had to overcome my own fear actually to be, um, when I developed these workshops and the piece itself, um, because I had to ask myself, like, what right do I have <laughs> to ask people to think about their fears, relive their fears, um, write about their fears, because I thought about, like, um, evoking past trauma, and I really had to overcome that. And the way I did that was actually to, <laughs> it seems pretty simple and a little romantic, but it's been always true for me. I, I just had to remind myself that I'm doing it out of love. Um, yeah, like I, uh, I know what my intention is and I haven't, thank goodness, <laughs> Um, I haven't received any comments about, you know, um, the project or the, the work having a negative effect on people. And I really try to remember that, like, if we do things out of love, then, you know, um, we can kind of have faith in that. Uh, and it shows, too, I think, like, whether or not it's writing a paper or... So there's the outline. Okay, I wanna move this back down. Uh, it's nice keeping things in the sketchbook too because you have it all together and it's almost like, I feel like the sketchbook is more, uh, it's also like a great way to document life, your life, you know, when we think about investing in future and the things that we leave behind for the next generation or um, yeah, just for the, future. Uh, yeah, sketchbooks are a great way to do that. Um, you know, as I get older, I think about that because my husband and I don't have children. Um, and I'm like, who's, <laughs> uh, who's going to inherit my, like, who, where are these stories going to go? Um, and so I document them in sketchbooks. And I, um, yeah, I have like, looking at them right now there's like seven of them it takes me two, about two years to well it used to take me two years to finish one sketchbook and then since 2016 it's only taken a year to finish and that's when I know it's like a rough time <laughs> like the quicker I finish I build it up um okay now I can share screen okay so let me check on time real quick okay we have about uh how's everybody doing are all of these cut and traced. People are at different stages in the process, but um, I think some people are still some people are still cutting, um, but they'll catch up. Okay, so now we are going to be filling in um, this fear. Okay, so uh, fill it in with your pencil. And 
and uh, make sure you put some pressure on it. Um, so do it with a heavy hand, right? Because when we think about fear, that's exactly what it is. It weighs us down. It's like, we could describe it as like thick, muddy, <laughs> um, heavy on the heart. So here I've started and uh, I love that sheen right there, that graphite makes. It almost becomes metallic, right? Um, so just really fill in that fear and feel that tension in your hand. Um, I've done this workshop in a few other places and it's amazing how I'll see people like cracking their necks and they'll stand up and they'll just be like stretching their arms. Um, but really feel that tension in your hand and uh, yeah, like take in the experience, right? Like, are you starting from the edge and working in the pressure, the pressure of your, of your pencil on the paper, creating these indentations, the sound of it. Yeah, this is fear. It scratches onto our surface and, and deeper. It's dense, it can be. So, yeah. I'm gonna share my screen while you fill in this fear or wherever you are at. Um, all right, so, so this is the piece that I worked on um, for the San Diego Art Institute, which will be um, I'm really excited that it's um, going to be traveling to MCLA, to Gallery 51. It's four by six feet, and that entire thing is, uh, it's in graphite. And I, I had developed blisters on my fingers filling this in, and I thought, this is, it's like, physical affliction caused by physically filling in the space with fear. <laughs> I thought that was pretty profound. I was like, wow, look what art does. You know, these ideas just kind of come up during the process. Um, and uh, so this is what it looked like there. You could see how um, community members have uh, erased some of the areas here. Um, this is this is Gary. He was the first one to start erasing, and some of the quotes are really interesting. So he writes, or he um, he said, "It's really difficult to erase this fear." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, isn't it though?" <laughs> because the graphite was so thick. Um, here is, these are the peacemakers uh, from the International Rescue Committee who I worked with. They're refugee high school students from all over the Middle East, from Africa. Um, we had one young woman from um, Thailand. Uh, and so there she is like rubbing it in with her finger, which is amazing. And so um, one of the Syrian American students um, had arrived in 2018 as a refugee. And um, she says, it's easier to erase fear where someone else has already erased it. And uh, it was just such a beautiful um, comment. And it just made me think about our predecessors, right? And those who paved the way for us. Um, when we think about like Martin Luther King, uh, we don't, I don't necessarily think about him experiencing fear, but of course he did. He's human. Um, and he overcame those fears. What if this doesn't work? Uh, maybe he felt like there was no other choice because his people were being so oppressed and murdered. And so he had to overcome that fear in order to make a difference. Um, thinking about, you know, those who fought for women's rights to vote, like what fears did they go through and overcome so that we could live the life that we're living and have these um, opportunities that we have. Um, so here is after they erase the fear, 
uh, here's the eraser sheddings. The gallerist actually came in and tried to sweep it up. And I was like, leave it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, Cause it's the physical crumbling of fear, which I thought was uh, pretty amazing. So I actually collected that. Um, so, okay. I just wanted to share those photos. Okay, so uh, how is everybody doing as far as filling in the fear? Because we have um, the tutorial on the bird drawing is about half an hour. Or do we have comments? I'm sorry. I uh, Or questions or um, maybe... Does anybody want to share um, what they're experiencing right now, or? Trin, it's Barb. Um, hi, Barb. Hi, hi, hi uh, JD. Um, I my um, printout seems to have um, walked, uh, so I'm trying to get the printer connected up again. But I'm wondering, instead of drawing a bird, is it possible or or feasible to do a um, Yes, <laughs> a collage, you know, using uh, multiple birds, um, I, the, the whole concept of fear um, and, um, and uh, strengths, being someone in uh, long-term recovery from alcohol misuse, this is just like, I'm singing here. <laughs> and so... So anyhow, I just wanted to say thank you and 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 the uh, collage. If the collage is okay, I'm I'm headed that way. Yes, yes. Again, uh, first of all, like bless you. <laughs> you are so strong. Um, and yeah, I am so excited for you. Thanks. I'm yeah, happy this is, for you. This is exciting too to to pass on to my to the other people in my in my recovery group. It's just, you know, it's something that's just like, my mind is going crazy. Oh, this is- Can't wait to exciting. see you too when you come to Gallery 51. That'll be so, so excited. Fun. Yes, please pull me aside and like, <laughs> hug me tight. Um, yeah, of course. Yes, uh, collage. Uh, oh no, great. thank you for sharing. Great, great. great. Uh, great. Now I'm going to go see if I can get the printer to work. Yeah, yeah. And of course, like, this is what's great is you, we could do this on our own time, right? I mean, we're not given too much time here. Right. Um, so, ooh, look at that. Yeah, that is great. That's, that's such, oh, look how luminous it is. Yes. So there's something else, right? Fear has the, so yeah, like during the process, there's all these ideas that come in revelations. So fear has the potential to reflect our light. And there it is physically on that piece of paper. Um, and again, the drawing tutorial we're going to do after this, and then you can continue it. Um, at, I feel like we might have just enough time to fill in any race together, but the tutorial, if we don't get to it, um, it's available for you on YouTube. Um, I've made um, the link public, so you should be able to click on it. Um, and if I'll, figure it out. That's like the tech stuff. <laughs> I struggle with. Um, but yes, like you don't have to draw a bird. It could be a collage. This is your work. If there doesn't even have to be a bird. Uh, um, this is, I, I tend to teach what I know and what I'm currently doing in this studio so that we're all kind of like doing this together what represents freedom it doesn't it might not be a bird you know this is like feathers here I did some uh cyanotypes oh no internet connection unstable okay uh yeah so what how this is your work right this is your work this is your art um for you to keep and hopefully display so you could see it and remember and uh yeah, be reminded of your inherited strength um, that will get you through this fear, right? We're all still standing. We're all here together. Um, we've all showed up because we care. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just want um, us to encourage each other uh, 
during our hardships. Uh, yeah. So however it is that you want to express this. Um, yeah. And then thinking about like what causes these fears, right? Is it like outside forces? Uh, is it, you know, fear and doubt? We're going to be doing um, another a similar project about doubt and thinking about where those two things intersect. How are they different? Where's that line? Maybe it's not a line. Maybe it's like a blurred kind of nebulous liminal space um, where fear and doubt connect, right? Uh, what causes these things? For me, <laughs> so I was pretty uh, dedicated to sharing my work on social media and then my heart just couldn't handle it anymore and all the yeah just all the bad news and i know it formed but my heart just couldn't handle it and now it's in like two years so that was one of the things that really instilled a lot of fear in me how are we going to do this together? how are we going to fix this what can I do? Am I doing enough? And then there's moments in the studio. I mean, this is my, and it just, they just happen to filter through my hands into images. But, um, you know, there's moments where, I mean, I'm, I'm dedicated, but then these doubts creep in and I'm like, what am I doing? Am I even making a difference? I'm making things like what, am I making a difference at all? Like, or who's going to see this or who's going to, you know, just doubt <laughs> lies, lies. So um, yeah, all of us have a unique voice. All of us are valuable um, in our communities. Um, and all of us are meant for important things. And only you can do the work that you do because your voice is unique. Um, and I want, I, I just hope that y'all will remember that. Um, and if you don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. They might be doing a similar thing, but not in the way that you'll do it because you're unique and you're special. And um, so, yeah, I, I try to, and I'm, you know, it's like there's a Chinese proverb when one teaches to learn. So as I'm saying this, I'm like reminding myself. So I'm not trying to, I'm preaching to me here. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so just remember that this is, it's uh, know this to be true that you are just invaluable um, to this life and to those around you. Um, how are we doing? <laughs> uh, do we? Okay, great. Um, is how's everybody doing on this business? <laughs> I didn't get too far. <laughs> and I want to encourage. Like, does anybody want to share anything? I feel like I'm just kind of like rambling. <laughs> well, I'm left-handed, so I have smudges all over my paper. Um, yes, smudges. <laughs> yes, smudges. I'm all of <laughs> That's what I love so much about charcoal. I, I work with like the old school stuff. Like um, my first love is oil on canvas, but then I do like charcoal. Um, and I, I love this the smudges and I love the messiness of it um, because the medium it teaches me to let go of control is really what it does so when I'm working with acrylic I can it dries quickly so I can control it wait for it to dry and really refine things but with oil it splatters and the turpenoid just kind of runs um, and it's really it's pretty difficult to control it's like it's like painting with butter essentially <laughs> it's like it melts and it runs and um, it's uh, in the same with charcoal and graphite, right? So like, yeah, this, you know, the fingerprints, but this is so unique. This is the, the human hand, right? We live in this world that's like digital and there's something about seeing the human hand. Um, I don't know if you all have seen like watercolors in galleries or wherever on a friend's studio table or um but there's sometimes you can see the pencil sketchings 
um, through the watercolor. I love that. It's like, it's the hand, it's the marking, the human marking of the process, um, which is so important. Like um, notes from your instructor on your essay, you know, like handwritten in marker or, you know, red pen and there's little symbols that are drawn in. I, I just value the human hand so much because these days it's, you know, when I was like <laughs> uh, younger, um, you know, we used to pass notes in school. I used to get in trouble all the time because I'd write notes and like, you know, send them to a friend um, a few desks down. And I, I wonder if that still happens, you know, like notes that are taken in class, handwritten, uh, is it all done on the, um, your laptop now? And there's something about the human hand creating marks that is so, I mean, if you think about the things that you've saved, like cards or letters that someone's written to you, this is, you know, it's their, well, I can, I know we're not gonna, um, okay, so it's like, 1137, I'm thinking we can just work on this together and then y'all can draw the birds on your own. Is that fine with everyone? Okay. By the way, Trin, you should know that, that students in the class just talk notes to each other on your- Oh, I love it. I mean, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> it, it um, that's amazing. They're still doing it. That's so great. That's so great. Yeah, I, uh, so I have, um, I know we're doing studio visit uh, last week uh, of October, but I'm super excited. Um, so I'm just going to share with you things anyway. This is a copy. Uh, this is a copy of my grandfather's travel journal. And um, I can't believe we found this. It, we actually found it the day we buried my grandmother. It was in a little blue shoe box or uh, suitcase under her bed. Um, share the link to the video chat. Okay, yes, I will do that. Um, I will do that. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, he wrote down all the dates. So they stayed in three refugee camps. Okay, so left Saigon, April 30th. 75 at 2 30 p.m. I love that he wrote the time. Arrived in Subic Bay. This was the first refugee camp in the Philippines, May 8th. Arrived in Guam, second refugee camp, May 12th. Arrived in Anderson Base. Um, where was this? Oh, interesting. Uh, Philippines, Guam, Okay, not sure. This might be in Pennsylvania. I will look that up. Um, arrived in Fort Indian Town Gap, uh, which is in Pennsylvania. And that's where I was born, uh, June 2nd. So he hand wrote all of this. And it's it was just so interesting to me because it was in English. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Why is he writing this in English? Like he's just like Vietnamese. Uh, and so then I learned after asking all these questions that he was actually, he taught English in Vietnam and used to visit um, the United States for conferences. And so uh, when they arrived, I felt like, oh my goodness, my family was so privileged because they, he could already speak the language to help navigate through whatever systems they had to go through, right? Like they were, um, on welfare for a time and to try to get sponsored and all the government, like whatever it is they needed to do uh, to establish themselves um, as residents here. So I thought that was really special. So handwriting. Yep, this is, and it's, uh, yeah, human marks, human marks. So, um, how many of you are all feeling in fear? How does it feel in your hand? Is your hand cramping up? <laughs> yeah. Yes, their hands are cramping. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, people, um, my husband, when he's stressed, he gets severe back problems. Um, 
when I'm stressed physically, I feel like I just eat things. <laughs> I don't know if I feel like physical, maybe I do. I don't really get headaches and things. Uh, I'll have to think about that. I feel like I just kind of like put it in the art and then lose myself in it. Um, that's how I deal with it. And then again, how do we deal with fear? What do we, what kind of things do you do to help um, alleviate that for yourself and for others? So, <laughs> okay, we're just gonna do a little studio visit. <laughs> so these, this is an Amer or, um, a Vietnamese green finch. So this is painted uh, in acrylic. And these are the refugee children. And this is charcoal. You can kind of see the smudges around, or maybe, maybe. Um, and this green finch represents the allies. And it's actually sending down this lifeline to pull the children out of the wilderness. So during the escape from Vietnam, a lot of, um, there were the boat people who escaped um, by boat. And then there were also many people who escaped on foot. My husband was one of them. So he, um, he actually escaped, him and his family escaped on foot from Vietnam through Cambodia into Thailand on foot. <laughs> just and uh and they survived and i just learned a week ago preparing for this talk actually so thank you all um for providing me a uh yeah window to learning more he had shared that he was a baby um, when they had escaped and um that he had gotten extremely sick because it's like super damp in the jungles and there's just like disease there's so much um and they almost turned around um because for fear that he wouldn't make it. Um, but uh, yeah, he ended up, he made it. Um, so I was just thinking about like, and then how, uh, the impossible, these impossible things happen, right? Like impossible, seemingly impossible things happen. Um, and I really want to document that um, in my work. Uh, a lot of it having to do with war um, and survival. There's things that we go through that we just are like, how am I going to survive this? Like, it just seems impossible because we're in so much pain or there's so much suffering. Um, but then we do. And we can look back and refer to that. So when other people are going through it, we can share these stories and um, you know, support each other. Or we can refer back to ourselves when we're going through another hardship, right? Like I'm, I've made this, um, I am, am strong and I've inherited the strength from my predecessors who also made it. And so, um, yeah, I really want to document these like seemingly impossible situations, um, because they're real and they incite hope. So, um, yeah, Vietnamese green finches. I've also been including um, American goldfinches in my work um, because uh, we are both. I'm both. And although, you know, some refuse to recognize that. Um, and a lot of the birds that I'm, um, they, they're representing freedom, really, and flight and migration. And um, yeah. Uh, birds. So that's why I'm sharing all this um, work about birds. But again, like this is your work. So however you want to embellish, um, please do. Uh, so after we fill this in, we're going to be physically erasing it. And I, um, oh, we have like four minutes. Left. Um, yeah, I want to encourage you just to really meditate. And I know I've been talking the whole time. So it's like, um, but when you finish this, like on your own, like in your own quiet um, spaces, uh, really think about erasing those fears as you're physically doing it. 
um, how we go about doing that, what steps we might take. Um, well, and then just confronting it, right? Like, what is it that we are actually afraid of? Because um, I feel like sometimes the fear can be masked with like more underlying fears, right? Um, so when we're done filling it in and we erase it, so I'll just like erase some of it right now. Yeah, it is actually pretty tough to erase. Oh, look at that smudge. I love it so much. Um, we'll be left with this ghost of fear. Um, and so that's something else that kind of came up as I was like watching this happen. It was just so fascinating because I'm like creating this piece and then I have to let go of it. Once I put it out in public, um, I have no control over the way it's like viewed or, um, or interpreted or, uh, and so I saw this like ghost of fear that was left and I thought, this is so interesting because some of these fears we might forget, we overcome and we might forget, but some of them are looming, right? Because <laughs> we're human beings um, and the, con the world is constantly bombarding us with these ideas. Uh, and so, um, yeah, the, the fact that it could not be completely erased was really interesting. Um, you know, so and that speaks on our strength too, because even though they're looming and we can continue forward, you know, it just kind of, it's proof of our strength, right? Um, that we can't completely erase it, but yet we deal with it. Uh, so yeah, a lot of revelations happen through the process and especially with like the community oriented stuff that I do. Um, it's It was funny because someone had, asked me, I was doing an interview and somebody had asked me, um, as, a, as a community artist, as an artist who works with the community, and I just didn't, I didn't quite, or like, I've heard people call me like an art educator, like I don't, I'm not really good with labels like that, I just kind of make stuff, and then I share it, <laughs> and I'm like, I just share these things that I've discovered, and I just want other people to experience it because it's so exciting to me. Um, to these to discover these things about myself um, and about just ways we can support each other and about healing and so um, I'm so fortunate to be able to like work with the community <laughs> uh, and um, yeah and thank you so much for taking part in this and for your time and your um, yeah and your effort uh, so thank you all so much thank you Thank you. Thank you, Trin. Thank you. Thank you.